Elia went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisa saw him no more. Second Kings, chapter two, verse eleven to twelve. It is not wrong for you to depend on your Elia, for as long as God gives him to you. But remember that the time will come when he must leave and will no longer be your guide and your leader, because God does not intend for him to say. Even the thought of that causes you to say, "I cannot continue without my Elia." Yet God says, "You must continue alone at your Jordan." Chapter two, verse fourteen. The Jordan River represents. The type of separation, where you have no fellowship with anyone else, and where no one else can take your responsibility from you, you now have to put to the test what you learned when you were with your Elia. You have been to the Jordan over. And over again with Elia, but now you are facing it alone. There is no use in saying that you cannot go. The experience is here, and you must go. If you truly want to know whether or not God is the God, your faith. Believes him to be, then go through your Jordan alone, alone at your Yeriko, chapter two, verse fifteen. Yeriko represents the place where you have seen your Elia do great things. Yet, when you come alone. To your Yeriko, you have a strong reluctance to take the initiative and trust in God, wanting instead for someone else to take it for you. But if you remain true to what you learned while with your Elia, you will receive a sign. As Elisa did, that God is with you. Alone at your bedel, chapter two, verse twenty-three. At your bedel, you will find yourself at your wit's end, but at the beginning of God's wisdom. When you come. To your wit's end, and feel inclined to panic. Don't stand true to God, and He will bring out His truth in a way that will make your life an expression of worship. Put into practice what you learned while with your Elia. Use his mantle and pray. See chapter two, verse thirteen to fourteen. Make a determination to trust in God, and do not even look for Elia anymore.